Portia prestigious prize. <laughs> Yay! It's me again, guys. Back again with another good old prayer on walking in goodness. So, what I want to say is that song is Tamla Man Change Me. So, I also want to say is get in tune. Tune in. Subscribe to the Bible Vibe. Get in tune. Tune in. Subscribe to the Bible Vibe. I don't need any pain. Because I'm already cool. But I would like supporters. I have faith in God. So get in tune. Tune in. Subscribe to the Bible Vibe. Guys, today the word of the day is flesh. And it's flesh because in order to be good, you have to just like, first you got to want to be good. If you don't want to be good, nothing else ain't going to matter if you don't want to be good. But the second thing about it is you going to struggle with your own self. And that is going to be a part of trying to be the best person that you want to be. So, um, I also wanted to say that I have a playlist on changing your life. It's called Changing Your Life. When you go to my YouTube channel, you see playlist. It's called Changing Your Life. And it's all the videos I look at to get to try to change me and keep me good. And I also have a, a playlist and it's called Good Music. And it's music with of God because when I was like growing up, it was hard for me to like listen to gospel music because I didn't find no gospel music that I really liked. But in my playlist is songs like this and all the songs that you hear on my YouTube channel and in the future to come, you're going to hear gospel music to keep you in tune with God and walking in the goodness. Another thing I want to say is, is that apart from God, we cannot do nothing. You know, from God, leaving God and going the other direction is like leaving light and going to darkness or leaving life and going to death. So... All goodness is in God, and without God, we cannot do good. Um, what I used to do, and I always did it when I was younger, and I would talk to people like this in college. I was like 21. I graduated the first time when I was 22. I would say, I would have this if God is willing. Like, I always wanted a daycare. I don't have a daycare now, but I always wanted a daycare, and I would always say, if God is willing, I will have a daycare, and I would talk like that. Even though I, I didn't talk like a, um, a noble person, and I didn't say the best things all the time, but when I wanted something, I always said, if God was, was willing, and I would just keep going with my conversation. I also want to say is, as Christians, we follow commandments. Because we follow the laws of Moses, the ones that was given to him by God. And I say that because a lot of people feel like we don't. Also, I want to bring up that there's a struggle between good and evil. And sometimes we don't know that. As people, we don't know how great evil is. You know? Um, evil, God, God only knows how evil, evil is. You know, and I went to church this Sunday and my pastor, Pastor A.R. Bernard, he was talking about goodness, being good. And I was like, wow, because I was praying to like get into like my rhythm on my YouTube channel. I actually pray about it. Prayer is so effective. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. It really works. Everything that I ever pray for, I ask God for. And over time, if it was good for me, I got it. I didn't get everything, but I got most of the good stuff that actually made me better. The prayer that we're doing today is goodness, and it's my favorite prayer because you're going to see when I read the prayer that it builds on top of everything. And that's how I, if I had an addiction to something, that's how I quit the addiction. If I had a problem, that's how I got better. It's by just step by step by step. I didn't get to be the awesome person that I am today by the grace of God. I didn't get to be that person overnight. You know, it took time because actually as a child, I was considered the bad one to some people. You know, and some people would say, oh, she changed so much. But really, I didn't. I just grew and got better and matured. And it 
depends on who's who's asking sometimes, right? So we about to get into the meat and potatoes. And what I want to say is, is that, guys, this is what I do. I read one prayer. On the topic of the prayer, I read everything from the Bible. That's what I do, in case it's not clear. Because one time I was watching my own YouTube channel, and it actually made me feel good. And I said to myself, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. But I realized I wasn't clear on what exactly I do. So I read one prayer from a prayer book and on that prayer i read everything from the bible i don't finesse it i don't take a passage and elaborate on it and um we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes and that is the prayer so and it's called walking in goodness good is a fruit of the spirit thank you oh god for the precious faith i have obtained through your righteousness you are multiplying your grace and peace onto me through my knowledge of you and Jesus. My Lord, for your divine power has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. You have given me the great and precious promises of your words, so that by them I might be a partake of your divine nature, and therefore escape the corruption that is in the world. This makes me so very thankful, Father. As a partake of your divine nature, through the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, I'm able to walk in the fruit of goodness. Therefore, given all diligence, I will add virtue to my faith and knowledge to my virtue. To my knowledge, I will add self-control. And to my self-control, I will add patience. And to my patience, I will add godliness. And to my godliness, I will add kindness. To my kindness, I will add love. And as I let these qualities develop in my life, I will be able to walk in goodness at all times. Thank you, O oh Lord, for your promise that these qualities will make me fruitful and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Yay! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him. He fell on his knees before Jesus. Good teacher, he said, what must I do to receive eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God. You know what the commandments say. Do not commit murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false witness. Do not cheat. Honor your mother and father. Teacher, he said, I have obeyed all those commandments since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. That's beautiful. You are missing one thing, he said. Go and sell everything you have. Give the money to those who are poor. You will have treasures in heaven. Then come and follow me. The man's face fell. He went away sad because he was very rich. Jesus looked around. He said to his disciples, How hard is it for rich people to enter God's kingdom? The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard is it to enter God's kingdom? It is hard for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. It is even harder for a rich man to enter God's kingdom. The disciples were even more amazed. They said to each other, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With people that is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Peter said to him, We have left everything to follow you. What I'm about to tell you is true, Jesus replied. Has anyone left home or family or fields for me and the good news? They will receive a hundred times as much in the world. They will have homes and families and fields, but they will also be treated badly by others. In the world to come, they will live forever, but many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. That was Mark 10, verse 17 through 29. Okay, so this is Galatians 5, 22. By the fruit of the Holy Spirit produces his love, joy, and peace. It is being patient, kind, and good. It is being fruitful and gentle and having control of oneself. There is no law against things of that kind. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed their sinful nature to his cross. 
They don't want what sin, what their sinful nature loves and longs for. Since we believe in the Spirit, let us march and step with the Spirit. Let us not become proud. Let us not make each other angry. Let us not want what belongs to others. And I, and I just read that out the King James Version. You see how simple that was? <laughs> Coming out this book. It's okay. Okay, so this is First Timothy verses uh, chapter six, verses eleven through twenty. But you are a man of God. Run away from all those things. Try hard to do what is right and godly. Have faith, love, and gentleness. Hold on to what you believe. Fight the good fight along with all the other believers. Take hold of eternal life. You were chosen for it when you openly told others what you believe. Many witnesses heard you. God gives life to everything. Christ Jesus told the truth when he gave witness to Pontius Pilate. In the sight of God and Christ, I give you a command. Obey it until our Lord Jesus Christ appears. Obey it completely. Then no one can find fault with it or you. God will bring Jesus back at a time that pleases him. God is the blessed and only ruler. He is the greatest king of all. He is the most powerful Lord of all. God is the only one who can't die. He lives in light that no one can get close to. No one has seen him. No one can see him. Gives honor and power to him forever. Amen. Command people who are rich in the world not to be proud. Tell them not to put their hopes in riches. Wealth is so uncertain. Command those who are rich to put their hope in God. He richly provides us with everything to enjoy. Command the rich to do what is good. Tell them to be rich in doing good things. They must give freely. They must be willing to share. In that way, they will put riches away for themselves. It will provide a firm basis for the next life. Then they will take hold of the life that really is left. Timothy, guard what God has trusted with you. Turn away from goodness chatter. Timothy, guard what God has trusted with you. Turn away from godless chatter. Stay away from opposing ideas that are falsely called knowledge. Some people believe them by doing what they have wandered away from the faith. May God's grace be with you. So this is Second Peter chapter 1 verses 1 through 10 first simon peter i'm writing the letter i serve jesus christ i'm his apostle i'm sending this letter to you who have received a faith as valuable as ours you received it because our god and savior jesus christ does what is right and fair for everyone may more and more grace and peace be given to you may they come to you as you learn more about god about jesus our lord God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. All of that has come to us because we know the one who chose us. He chose us because of his own glory and goodness. He has also given us his very great and valuable promises. He did it to you could share in his nature. He also did it so you could escape from the evil in the world. That evil is caused by sinful longings. So you should try very hard to add goodness to your faith. To your goodness, add knowledge. To your knowledge, add the ability to control yourselves. To the ability to control yourselves, add the strength to keep going. To the strength to keep going, add godliness. To the godliness, add kindness to believers. And to kindness to believers, add love. You should pose more and more of those good posts. Points. They will make you useful and fruitful as you get to know our Lord Jesus Christ better. But what if some of you do not have these good points? Then you can't see very well. You are blind. You are forgotten that your past sins have been washed away. My brother and sister, be very sure that God has appointed you to be saved. Be sure that he has chosen you. If you do everything I have just said, you will never trip and fall. You will receive a rich welcome into the kingdom that lasts forever. 
It is the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, do not, this is 1 John um, chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. And then I'm going to go backwards. So, this is do not love the world. Do not love the world or anything in it. If you love the world, love for the Father is not in you. Here is what people who belong to this world do. They try to satisfy their sinful nature wants them to do. They long for what their sinful eyes look at. They brag about what they have and what they do. All of this comes from the world. It doesn't come from the Father. The word as its evil longings are passing away. But those who do what God wants them to do live forever. So the world and its evil longings are passing away. But those who do what God wants them to do live forever. So now I'm going to go back to 1 John chapter 1, verses 15 through 15. So I'm going to start at chapter 1, um, verse 5. Here is the message we have heard from him and announced to you. God is light. There is no darkness in him at all. Suppose we say that we share life with God but still walk in the darkness. Then we are lying. We are not living by the truth. But suppose we walk in the light just as he is the light. Then we share life with one another and the blood of Jesus his son makes us pure from all sin. Suppose we claim we are without sin. Then we are fooling ourselves. The truth is not in us but God is faithful and fair. If we admit that we have sinned, we will forgive us our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. If we say we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar. His words has not placed in our lives. My dear children, I'm writing to I'm writing this to you so that you will not sin. But suppose someone does sin. Then we have one who speaks to the Father for us. He stands up for us. He is Jesus Christ, the blameless one. He gave this, he gave his life to pay for our sins. But he not only paid for our sins, he also paid for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know God if we obey his commands. Not do what Suppose someone says, I know him, but suppose that person does not do what God commands. Then that person is a liar and is not telling the truth. But if anyone obeys God's word, then God's love is truly made complete in that person. Here is how we know we belong to him. Those who claim to belong to him must live just as Jesus did. Dear friends, I'm not writing you a new command. Instead, I'm writing one you have heard before. You have had it since the beginning. But I'm writing what amounts to a new command. Its truth was known in how Jesus lived. It is also shown in how you live. The darkness is passing away. The true light is already shining. Suppose people claim to be in the light but hate a brother or a sister. Then they are still in the darkness. Those who love their brother and sister are living in the light. There is nothing in them that make them fall into sin. But those who hate a brother or sister are in the darkness. They walk around in the darkness. They don't know where they are going. The darkness has made them blind. Dear children, I'm writing to you because your sins have been forgiven. They have been forgiven because of what Jesus has done. Fathers, I'm writing to you because you have known the one who is from the beginning. Young people, I'm writing to you because you have won the battle over the evil one. Dear children, I'm writing to you because you have known the Father. Father, I'm writing to you because you have known the one who is from the beginning. Young people, I'm writing to you because you are strong. God words live in you. You have won the battle over the evil one. 
You notice that. I noticed that. Like he said with the young people, he said it twice. And with the dear children, he said it twice. And with the father, he said it twice. But he also said with the young people, like, young people, I'm writing to you because you have won the battle over the evil one. God wants us young. He wants us all at all ages. But he wants us young so he could do great works in us. Like um, David, for example. So what I want to say is thank you for tuning in. Jesus is Lord. I love you. And have a blessed day.